So would you grab your Bibles now and just say with me that this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I boldly confess, I boldly confess that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and today after I have been taught the word of God, I will never, no never, be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a song when I was growing up that was called I Want Muscles by Diana Ross. And I remember being a kid going, I don't know what all this means, but it sounds like something that the grown people was, should be talking about. Maybe I shouldn't be listening to it. But as I started reflecting on what I wanted to talk about, which was an opportunity to grow faith, I kept thinking, I want muscles, I want muscles. So my opportunity to grow faith means that I have to develop these spiritual muscles. So Hebrews 11, 29 through chapter 12, verse 2 was read, I believe, through our lectionary. But in case it wasn't, let me read it to you. It says, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. I want muscles. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. So she had a strategy. And what more should I say for a time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and of David and Samuel and the prophets who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. The world wasn't even worthy of these people. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, listen, did not even receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that's all these people we just read about. They are now the cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, 
who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, what did he do? Endured the cross. Wait. For the sake of the joy, endured a cross. Muscles. Disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Opportunities to grow faith. My subtopic, I want muscles. Bishop shared with me that someone asked her this question. Why don't people embrace opportunities to grow their faith? Well, child, look. <laughs> look what's going to happen. Raging fires, the edge of the sword, death on a cross, receiving your dead by resurrection, Mocking and flogging, chains, imprisonment, stoned to death, sawn in two, killed by the sword, wearing the skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, torment. Okay, who's signing up? Here's the line. Single file, no pushing. <laughs> Doesn't sound like the thing that we understand faith will get us. Okay, because we are often um, in fiery, fiery services and they say to us, you, you want that house? You go out there with that bottle of oil that we gave you on New Year's Eve. Ha. And you're going to pour that all around the perimeter of that house. Ha. That's faith. Or I want you to go to that car lot. And put that oil all over the windshield of the car that you want. Grease it up. That's faith. And you're going to drive off of the lot with that greasy windshield <laughs> with the car that you want. <laughs> and we make a connection that that's faith. But we don't slow down and see some of the other things that faith requires us to endure so that we can develop our own faith muscle. So muscles are soft tissue. They have stretchy fibers um, that make up the muscle. And you, each of us have about 600 muscles in our bodies. And different muscles have different jobs. Some help you run. Some help you jump. And some help you do really delicate tasks like thread a needle. So you wouldn't be jumping with a piece of thread to push it through a needle, right? You need to have a delicate touch to do those types of things. And you have three main muscle kind of systems. You have a skeletal uh, group of muscles. You have smooth muscles like your digestive and uh, tract and your blood flow. Um, your skeletal, you know, that allows for those big movements. And then your cardiac muscles, which is your heart pumping. And then you have some that are involuntary and some that are voluntary. So like us sitting here blinking and breathing, those are your involuntary. We're not thinking about those types of things. But if you want to see me go to this end of the stage and run and jump over these steps and land and go past Brother Charlie, I'm going to have to think about that. Okay. So that's going to be more voluntary. So our faith muscle is probably more on that voluntary and involuntary. It's going to take a combination of that, which brings me to camp meeting. So we just came through this moment of camp meeting, and I want to say that some of it was... Um, more so involuntary because, uh, you know, we in our minds, you know, we're like, once we get to church, hey, it doesn't take anything for us to get there and be like, hey, glory, like Aunt Esther. But then that voluntary part is that part that says it is hot. I would much rather be at home sitting in my nice, cool air conditioning. I don't feel like putting no gas in my tank and driving there. It's going to be people from out of town. They won't notice that I'm not there. And being a part of those types of encounters takes effort on our part to submit and show up 
and be inconvenienced, which will help our faith muscle grow. So your faith then becomes demonstrated when you actually show up. So we expected people from Pentecost and the pandemic or those preaching women, those other tribes of women that follow our bishop to show up because we figured that, yeah, they're going to be excited. They're going to make an investment. They're going to show up because they want to be a part. This is their one time a year to like show up and be a part. So we anticipate that they will do this. But it's an inconvenience for them too. They have to pay money. They have to work out how they're going to get here. That's travel. That's an expense. They have to pay for a hotel. That means they're not going to be in the comforts of their own home or in their own bedrooms. They got to bring their children or work out child care. That's another expense. They got to eat. And they, too, have to be here in hot, humid conditions with us all day long. So what is it about when these opportunities to grow or embrace opportunities to grow our faith that sometimes we are slow to seize the moment? Why don't we want to grow our faith muscle? Hebrews, uh, the 11th chapter that we read through it, but when we go back to the first verse, we all know this one. We all say it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We all say this all the time, and we say it with a good attitude. We say it with our heads bobbing from side to side because we truly, truly believe it in our hearts that, that, that we understand what faith is, that it's a substance and that is not seen, meaning that we have this confidence that although we don't see it, we believe that it still is there. We have heard that faith is not um, a luxury, but that it is a necessity. That is something that we all have to have if we are going to navigate life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says that we live by faith and not by sight because what we see can mess us up sometimes, amen? What we see can hurt our feelings, amen? What we see can shake us sometimes, amen? But still, we believe that we have faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. That we must believe he exists. We have to believe that he exists. We've never seen him. We've never seen even his pinky toe walk past us here in the congregation. But somehow we keep showing up. We keep singing because we believe that he exists. And we believe that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Camp meeting was an opportunity for us to diligently seek him. Building muscles, you have to exercise, you have to be diligent, you have to seek it. You got to lift up the weights, you got to do the squats, you got to do the crunches, you have to be diligent. You got to get up and you got to go for that walk. You have to be diligent. It takes about three to four weeks before people kind of go, hmm, something's looking a little bit different. But about month four, they go, have you lost weight? Are you doing something different? It's the same with your faith. You got to keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And then eventually it becomes second nature. Just by inside of you, it's like automatic. You're automatically able to believe. You're automatically able to extend that muscle. You're automatically able to jump. You're automatically able to run. You're automatically able to do it without even thinking about it because you've been diligent and you've been inconvenienced, but you've been um, um, willing to be inconvenienced because you knew that that faith muscle had to be developed. In Acts, it says that they met daily. They came together and prayed and, and talked with the apostle and, and they, they meditated on the scriptures. They did this daily. God forbid if we said every day we're going to be here at the cathedral daily to meditate on the scriptures 
in fellowship with our apostle and we're going to pray. We can't get on the line weekly. We can't show up on Sunday weekly. We don't read our Bible daily. But in Acts, they did it daily. What was the difference in their faith? What's the difference in our faith? When the opportunities come, what is the thing that keeps you from seizing the moments? Or do we relate or understand that in order to grow, sometimes you have to be inconvenienced? See, failure is found in our comfort zone. Growth is found when we leave our comfort zone. See, leaving childhood or moving into adolescence, we have these things that are called growing pains. It's uncomfortable. You ache. Your body throbs. You have cramps. You have headaches. And sometimes you even get stretch marks because your bones stretch out before your skin can catch up. Do you have any spiritual stretch marks? Does anything make you uncomfortable when it is a push, a push, a push for your faith muscle to be developed? Your faith sometimes has to be uncomfortable. We know so many scriptures that we quote about faith. I went through a few of them, but are we diligent as we seek them out? Or are we like, nope, child, I just don't feel like doing that today. That's an inconvenience in what I'm trying to do. See, because this is my list for the day. And that's all I'm doing, my foe no more. See, the enemy uses our inconvenience to pounce. And we can always just about justify why the inconvenience is, is okay. Because what you're trying to do just ain't going to work for me. But that is what stretches out the muscle. And if we don't flex it, it just will never, ever get stronger. See, every single person in the Hebrews 11th chapter was inconvenienced. I can't see how being flogged was convenient for that person that day. I can't see how being tossed in a raging fire was on somebody's to-do list that day. I can't see how being uh, put in war was something that somebody was like, you know what, yeah, I woke up, I ate my Wheaties, I feel like war today. I can't see how women receiving their dead was something that they got up and said, you know what, today, um, this is the day I'm just going to go out and stand in the graveyard and I'm just going to see who pops up through the ground today. This is what's on my list. I can't see how being mocked and um, being put in chains of imprisonment was on anybody's list. I cannot see how people got up in this time and said, these are the things that I want to do today. Today is a great day to be persecuted. Today is a fantastic day to be destitute. This is the day I want to lose every single thing that I have so that God can test my faith. You know what? I'm just going to open the door and let him come in and rob me. I'm going to give you the pin code and my ATM card because this is the day to be destitute. Have at it. I just can't see. Because you know what? I want to test my faith muscle. I just want to see how it feels to be weak today. I want to see how it is to just walk into the lion's den today and just see if anybody going to eat me. I just can't see it. But as it was happening, what was happening inside of them? But as a result of all the things that they went through, it's how they made it into Hebrews 11, which is considered the Faith Hall of Fame. Now, not everyone who trusted God was delivered. Not everyone who trusted God was protected. 
but they all received God's approval and the ability to endure when the other ones gave up. See, God wants to grow your faith. Camp meeting was an opportunity for your faith to grow. It was a faith grower. It was a muscle strengthener. What can we do now after that workout? What's different in your life now that you've come through the moment of camp meeting? What's, what can you do now? What can you leap over now? What can you lift now? What can you dead press now that you've come through that moment of camp meeting? What's different in your life now that you've encountered Thornton again? Now that you've encountered Bishop again? Now that you've encountered Jackson again? What's different in your life now that you've heard a different sermon again? What has um, been provoked inside of your belly? What What's leaping afresh again now that you've had these encounters again with the men and women of God again? What's different now that you've sung on the praise team again with other people from other states and other nations? What's different in your life now? What was provoked anew when the woman from South Africa came here and stood here and testified about all it took for her to get here from across the ocean? What's different in your faith now that you've had this camp meeting experience? Or is everything just the same? Isaiah talked about the children of Israel and how God did everything that he could to set up this beautiful vineyard for them. My beloved, let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it. He cleared it of stones. He planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower tower in the midst of it. He hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes. Good, sweet, succulent grapes. But it yielded wild grapes or bitter grapes. Sometimes that's just how we act. He did all that he could with good water and rich soil and with the goal of getting these perfect, this perfect, perfect fruit. And it still yielded bitter grapes. Bitter grapes, a terrible harvest after all of that work. The children of Israel, if you read that entire passage, took all that God did for them, all this beautiful opportunity to blossom and grow and be fantastic. He kept providing, took it for granted. They were selfish. They served themselves. They sinned. They, they stole from the poor. They questioned God's counsel. And for a price, they even changed God's word. God expected sweet, he got bitter. He expected justice, he got bloodshed. Today, I encourage us to push past our comfort into a space where we feel the burn. Feel the burn, no pain, no gain. Flex the muscle of faith so that it grows bigger and bolder and stronger. Because that's all God wants from us us. He wants us to embrace the inconvenience. He wants us to show up. Show up. Show up. Show up. Be inconvenient so that he can expand the muscle of faith that he's automatically put inside of you. But if you don't use it, it will atrophy and die. He can't use it if it wastes away. Every opportunity that he provides for us, if we we just continue to refuse to produce sweet succulent fruit and just continue to give him back bitterness and just disregard and unconcerned and just don't do anything that he asks from us just show up just participate just embrace the opportunity that's all he's saying I'm putting it right here in your space you don't even have to travel you don't even have to rent a hotel you don't even have to do anything you don't even have to find any place for your kids I put Pastor Val right here you all your kids already know her your kids don't even have to develop a relationship with her you already have everything you need I've already dug out a vineyard for you why are 
are you yielding bitter fruit? Why? Why won't you just grow a sweet grape? Why do you insist on being a wild, sour grape? Why do you want to be weak and have atrophied muscles when you could flex and stun on them with all of the good things that I've put in your midst? You have access. You have access when you could leap. You could run. You can jump. You can have voluntary muscle spasms. You're going to have involuntary muscle rhythm happening underneath. You don't even have to think about it because your faith would be so developed and so fine-tuned by all the things that you already have in your midst if you would just be inconvenienced and seize the opportunities. Seize the opportunities. I have no intention on preaching hard today. But I want to say to us, there are so many moments and opportunities to be a part of faith growing activities. Let's not take it for granted. Yeah, camp meeting is for them, but it's also for us. God bless all of us who participated. We are good people, amen? We are good people. It's such a blessing when, you know, we're walking through and people are like, oh my God, look, that's Brother Dove. I love when you sing X, Y, and Z. Oh my God, that's Sister Darling. I love when I talk to you about X, Y, and Z. Like these people come here and they know exactly who we are because they have been watching from afar. They know exactly who you are. They've studied us. They know our names. Listen, seeing you develops their faith muscle. Just seeing you, just interacting with you. Oh my God, that's Alan. Everybody knows Alan. It has stirred faith in people. People are adopting. People are inquiring about foster care. This, you don't know the impact that just your life and your choices are making on people who are watching you from afar. So when you show up, it matters. The small things. Sometimes it's not even the fact that you got oil in your pocket and that you can cast out a demon. It's just the fact that they see you still serving in the house of the Lord. It's just the fact that you showed up and that they saw you singing. It's the fact that you were working a snack table and they got to interact. Oh my God, that's Mother Ragsdale. Sure, I'll buy 10 more things. Who else? How do you want me to cash app it? It's just the fact that they get to interact with the people that belong to the cathedral. Your presence matters. Matters. Your life matters. You singing your songs matter. You serving at the door matters. You working with the bishop matters. You working in the sound room matters. You singing and tap dancing and shouting and running laps across the pulpit. Every single thing that you do, it matters. You bringing your children to worship, it matters. All of it matters. All of it matters. I know I know that it is. I know that it is. You think Bishop wants to be up every Sunday morning, Monday through Friday at 4 o'clock in the morning getting ready for Pentecost in the pandemic? It is an inconvenience, but it matters. It matters. Your life matters. Your time matters. Your times matter. Your
matters. You feel like it's an inconvenience to stop by the church again on your way to work, again on your way home. You're late making dinner again. Your husband is texting you again. Your kids are asking where you at again. It is an inconvenience, but it does matter to your faith. It is strengthening your faith muscle. It's strengthening your faith muscle. I want muscles. I want muscles. I want to be able to leave God. I want to be able to run God. I want to be able to jump God. Oh God, make me strong in my faith. God, don't let me be distracted sometimes by what I see, God. Don't let me be distracted by what I'm going through, God. Don't let me be distracted, God, by what it looks like. God, you got, I'm lost, God. I've been persecuted. I've been to the bottom. At some point, it has to pay off. What is the payoff? When? Where? It's cost me a lot. But at some point, there is a payoff. And I will be counted in the Faith Hall of Fame. Corto, I know you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. I know you are. Taya, I know you're going to be in the Faith Hall of Fame. My Auntie Ruth, I know you're going to be in the Faith Hall of Fame. Ain't no way Pastor Bill not going to be in that Faith Hall of Fame. There's no way Carter not going to be in that Faith Hall of Fame. It will count. Don't lose your way. I just want to encourage you all today. I want you all to be encouraged. Be encouraged. The Bible says that Rahab, she used a strategy when those spies came. Get you a strategy. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's gonna, it's, you're going to be inconvenienced. But can you commit to it? So that you, too, can be in the Faith Hall of Fame. God has need of you. The people have need of you. They look for Veronica. They look for Shannon. They look for April. They look for, for Sandra. They look for us. We cannot be out of place when they show up. You have something for each of them. My husband says all the time, I don't know who these people are. But they walk up to him like, Dre, Dre is baby, what's up, baby? They walk up to him all the time because he's connected to me. And because he's connected to me, they want to know more about him. Our marriage encourages people. You never know what people are looking for to be encouraged by when they look at you. It matters. You may have no clue what these people's names are. Rahab didn't see me coming. Those boys in the fiery furnace didn't know you were coming. Hallelujah! 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 When you read through that Hebrews 11 passage, just know that they were just doing all that they could do to make it. And they didn't know that we would be sitting here at 1745 in August of 2022, reading them and drawing from their faith, building our faith muscles up and being encouraged so that we could go forward and so that we can encourage others, but we're drawing strength from them. Some of them didn't see it turn all the way around in their favor in their lifetime, but look at us now drawing faith from them. Look at us now drawing hope from them. Look at us now in 2022 being encouraged by what they went through. Years from now, your children, your children's children, your children's children's children will draw hope. They will draw faith. They will draw strength from your story. Do not cast away your confidence. There is great recompense of reward. This is 
Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. God wants to use all of us. Amen. I'm telling you, people just are watching your lives and they're being encouraged. God, help us to hold out. Help us to hold out. Help us to hold out. Don't let us be shifted. Don't let us be shaken. Don't let us get distracted. Help us to build up our spiritual muscles. Because we want to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. And we're going to be strong, buff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this word of encouragement, God. Thank you for letting us see the Faith Hall of Fame again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes it doesn't go the way we want it to go right then. But God, you're faithful. God, we recommit. Hallelujah. We can read our Bibles. We can make time to pray. We can make time to swing by the church. We can make time to participate in the activities, God, that you have prepared for us. We hear it all the time. Prayer line, Bible study, Saturday prayer. We hear all the opportunities, God. But let us be more intentional about being a part. Not just hearing it, but actually making time to be a part. Because our faith matters. Strengthening our faith matters. We don't want to be weak. And we don't want our faith muscles to atrophy. and wither we want to be able to access our faith and put it in drive when we need it we want to be able to access it and give some of it to somebody else who may be withering away we want to be able to speak life to other people who are, are feeling low and, and feeling sad we want to be able to like you know what's that thing that you put on people's chest and they pop back alive we want to be able to give life to people God we can't have people falling by the wayside around us and we got all this good juice. We want to electrify and motivate and bring others back to life and help them be encouraged and give them what they need because we're so full of the word. We're so full of praise. We're so full of prayer. We're so full of energy. We're so full of life. We're so full of love. We're so full of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That we got more than enough to share. God, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember in vacation Bible school, we used to sing that song. Not that I'm going to sing it, but the words were like, I will make you fishes of men if you follow me. And they would have us throwing out that hook. And then it was that Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons were Father Abraham. And everything was about winning people and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. In some kind of way, we grew up. And then we had bills. <laughs> We just had time for work. Maybe time to cook dinner. Sometimes we don't even have time for that. We're just picking up food on the way. Everything is just out of balance. God, help us to get back in balance. Help us to look at our lives and find the things that we can get back in alignment make us more better stewards of our lives 
so that the things that are really, really important come back to the forefront. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this word of encouragement. I pray that your people would be blessed as they go out into the week. Lord, we pray for our bishop again. And Apostle Sonia Blackwell, that happened on yesterday. Hallelujah. We thank God for her life. And I thank God for all of the people of Go Tell It Ministries Worldwide. Refresh and invigorate all of them. Thank you for Cobra. Thank you for Jackson. Thank you, oh God. These mighty men and women of God. Thank you for the seeing Thornton again, God. Thank you for just all of the people that were here. Thank you for Daikiba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And we're loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who for loving us. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're free to give now. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us so God bring us back in alignment the altar is open if you would like prayer or if you just want to come and kneel before the altar you are free to do that also if you've never received the gift of the Holy Spirit or you've never received the gift of salvation, you are welcome to come to the altar and we will make sure that you receive the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you were blessed by the word, you can also sow into the word also. But the altar is open. We give you a moment to come and pray. God, we thank you for meeting us here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless Brother Bethlehem. Thank you for his life, God. Thank you for his life. take your communion elements now we'll seal the word of God with communion hallelujah hallelujah Lord we thank you for the word of God today it's the bread and body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the Bible says to take a moment to examine ourselves amen the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mm. we thank you for all that you did on that cross and we break it now and we eat it together
Lord of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that as we take it in today, that whatever may be ailing you, as it goes through your system, that healing and deliverance would be your portion in Jesus' name. Drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Val, is there anything you want to add today? <laughs> we were supposed to share together. <laughs> Hallelujah. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. Clap your hands for the word one more time. Amen. This week, I ask that you would um, just be mindful that we are still on the line for Bible study. And it is one hour of prayer led by Elder Carter and uh, Pastor, uh, Elder and Pastor Carter. Oh, oh. Uh, Elder Carter. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Elder Carter. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We could not be the cathedral without Elder Carter. Amen. Amen. Psalms 20 says that may the Lord hear you you in the day of trouble and that the name of the God of Jacob may it defend thee may he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion that he would remember all of your offerings and accept your burnt offerings that he would grant thee according to your own heart and fulfill all of your counsel that we will rejoice in the salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners and may the Lord fulfill all of your requests. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you. And I pray that the angels of God would just cover us throughout the rest of this week. And that you would bring our bishop home safely. And that you would just keep your hands on us. And that you would remind us this week to seize every opportunity to expand and build upon our faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Have a wonderful week.